What's up guys and gals and welcome to the Nerdcastle for the first episode of Space Hulk Ascension which is a bit of a rewrite and a bit of an expansion of the original Space Hulk. I think in starting out, I will say that Full Control, the studio that developed this and the previous Space Hulk game, I think they got a lot of flack for making a one-for-one -one conversion of Space Hulk in their first foray into board gaming. And so I think what happened there is that a lot of people didn't know what Space Hulk was, and even, like, basically not a lot of people knew what 40k was, even less people knew what Space Hulk was, and so they bought the game thinking it was going to be like some kind of XCOM game, and then they found out that it was a board game and they were like, what the hell? And so I think what Full Control has decided to do with Space Hulk Ascension is that they've gutted the rule sets for Space Hulk, they've added in a level up system, they've added in customizable loadouts, they've added in customizable characters, they've added in an RPG system, perks like you have in Fallout, and essentially they've modified the game, the board game, into a video game. And I think it's worked out pretty well so far. I've clocked about 10 hours at this point into the game, I've had it for about a week and a half before release, and I'm excited about playing it with all of you. There are some things that I dislike about it, but most of those are limited to like, optimization for example. The game runs really poorly no matter what like graphic setting you put it on it just doesn't run well for me maybe it's just kind of an incompatibility with my hardware but one of the things that I've noticed about the game is that it just really really does not like to run at anything higher than 25 frames no matter what you do and so anyways before I start complaining let's go new game right here we get to choose our army straight away and so before I begin sucking at the spigot of Warhammer 40k like the giant raging nerd that I am the ultramarines they were founded I mean they're from McCraggy the ultramarines were founded by Robo Girly Man as I recall and they are the quintessential Space Marine. You cannot talk about Space Marines in any context without bringing up the Ultramarines. They are the 13th chapter of the first founding, and they are just involved in everything. Like, if there's if there's Space Marines being discussed, Ultramarines will come up at some point. This, of course, alienates some members of the community who don't like them, but I like the Smurfs. I don't hate on them like some people do. I don't mind them as much as other people do. I think they get a lot of attention, but I think they're really popular, and they float Games Workshop's boat monetarily, and so I think that's why they get so much attention. The Ultramarines are the ranged option in this game. They allow you to get a bonus to ranged hit and a minus to melee hit. Melee has been moved around a little bit in this game and it's a tad more survivable. Melee is still a bad proposition. In the original Space Hulk game, the number one rule is that you never want to be in melee without a thunder hammer and a power shield. If you get yourself into that situation, you are toast. This game, it's a bit more survival. It's still a bad idea. I would say that they increased your chances of survival from like 16% to like 30%. It's still a bad idea, but every now and again, one of your marines does something amazing and like fights off 10 gene stealers at the same time with a power fist. And you're like, wow, that was really unlikely and it still came through and I'm really happy about it. Their unique trait is the Cyclone Missile Launcher. And so that's something to look forward to if you wanted to play the Ultramarines. The Space Wolves. The Space Wolves were founded by Lehman Russ, as I recall. I'm not a big Space Wolves fan because I feel like they use the word wolf too much and it bothers me. I'm like, oh, we're Space Wolves with wolf claws. We took a wolf step. I wolfed down my dinner while we were chasing the wolfen. Like, if your teeth don't hurt from the word wolf by the time you finish the Space Wolves Codex, then I'm not sure. I don't know. Maybe it's just me, but they use the word wolf too much and it bothers me. They are the melee army in this game. They come with frost weapons. I have no idea what that modifies within the context of the game. They are the only army that I haven't played yet because I don't like the space wolves and so I just avoid them habitually. My game shop, there's way too many people at my game shop who play space wolves. And so it's kind of like an oversaturation thing for me. I just, not a fan. I can explain furthermore in the lore why I don't like the space wolves, but I'll do it in a weekend review video. I don't want to do it right here and, you know, get into a giant debate with space wolves fans. They get a minus to ranged hit chance, and they get a plus 5% to melee hit chance. So that's pretty cool. They're they're pretty fun. I mean, it's Lehman Russ's army. They're part of the first founding. They have wolf fangs. They do all kinds of Viking stuff. They're alcoholic, furry space grandpas, essentially. They have facial hair. That kind of distinguishes them well as well. The Blood Angels got the shaft in this game. The Blood Angels are the rivals of the Space Wolves. The Blood Angels, I think their primarch is Lionel Johnson, if I remember correctly. I am a Blood Angels fan. I don't play them, but I've read lore on them. The Blood Angels and the Space Wolves don't get along very well because Lionel... Basically, Lehman Russ is a dick, is what it comes down to. The founder of the Space Wolves likes to run his mouth. Lionel Johnson, who's the founder of the Blood El Angels, I said the Blood Elves, the Blood Angels, he knocked him out at one point and then they became best friends, but their chapters never forgave each other and so their chapters are kind of, it's kind of like a rivalry, it's sort of friendly but sort of not, it's hard to explain. Anyways, the Blood Angels kind of got the shaft in this game. Their campaign is identical to in the first game. They don't have a special ability, and they don't have any buffs or minuses. Why that precludes them from not having a unique trait, I'm not sure. I mean, their banner is misspelled. It says the Blood Angles. So I think that the Blood Angels was just sort of included as, like, 
Space Hulk is based on the Blood Angels, so they just sort of included them. And that's all there is to it. But the Blood Angels are a long-lost chapter of Imperial Trigonometers. All of your Sokotoas are for the Emperor. I don't know if I want to play. I've played most of the Ultramarine campaign. We beat the Blood Angels campaign in the first game. And so Space Wolves are really the logical option here, considering... I don't like the Space Wolves though, so I want you to all understand how much I love you guys for doing this because I'm really not a Space Wolves fan. Let's go. We're going to play it on normal, as always. We don't need the tutorial because we're good to go. This game is much more difficult than the first Space Hulk, I'll tell you that much right now. We get to choose our campaign. Any army, can, any chapter can run any campaign, but throughout the campaign it's a little bit weird. Like, So for example, this one is right next to McCrag or McCraggy or however you say that. I don't, it's weird. You read that word a thousand times when you're into Warhammer 40k lore, but nobody ever says it. And so, McCrag, that's the planet that the Ultramarines are from. But anyways, you can go to McCrag and defend it. I don't really see any of the chapters being able to do that in the lore. That seems a little bit too fluffy for me. I don't think the Ultramarines would allow it. It would be a, it would be a point of honor. They want to defend their own space. And the Blood Angels is the Sin of Damnation. We've already played that. Any army can play any campaign, but the branding is the same. And so they refer to you as Ultramarines if you're playing. Let's say that you are Space Wolves, and we play the Space Marine, Ultramarine campaign. They will, like, refer to us as, like, Ultramarines all the way through or something. I don't know. It's weird. We're going to be doing the Fall of Jotunheim. Destroy or redirect the Space Hulk Jotunheim and discover the fate of a long-lost Space Wolves pack. After millennia drifting in the warp, the Space Hulk Jotunheim threatens Imperial space once again, and an ancient signal from the depths of the Space Hulk draws the Space Wolves in search of long-lost brothers. Alright, so here's our Space Wolves. They're gonna have God. There were so many jokes related to the names of other people, and right now there's just no jokes related to these names. I guess we'll call them the Questioneers because their first character's name is Ask. Over here, I would call these guys like the Anals or something because they're the Anier, but... I don't know. I don't know. Space Hulks are a rare sight, and it's rarer still that the warp spits them out in an inhabited system where their deadly alien cargo can threaten the citizens of the Imperium. The vessel codenamed Jotunheim is one such Space Hulk. It has appeared in the Athens system. Unusually, it is transmitting a message on all frequencies in an ancient dialect of Fenris, home world of the Space Wolves. My brothers are redeemed. The Jotunheim is no longer a threat. So says Harolf the Rout. That sounds... I bet he turned to chaos. I mean, at any time, the Space Wolves are like five seconds from chaos anyways. They're already mutants. Your force of the Wolf Guard has been dispatched to board the Jotunheim and whatever threat lies aboard it, and discover Hyrolf's fate. Alright, so let's talk about the specifics of what makes this game different. If we go to the loadout menu, you're going to see a lot of cool stuff. So first and foremost, you've got your individual squads. You've got reserves, so you can swap people out. They don't have any ranged characters. I find that to be actually a little bit suspect. It eliminates... that's a little bit brutal. So with the other armies, as you level up, you've got two different things. In the other armies, you have little guys that have an aiming reticle right here, which means that they're a ranged focus guy. Ranged focus guys, as they level up, they get access to combi bolters. Oh, they do get access to combi bolters, but it looks like it's only the sergeants that do. The combo bolters will allow you to have multiple functions out of your bolter. Since we're playing Space Wolves, we don't have that option. None of them have combi bolters except for the sergeants, apparently. But their melee options appear to be a little bit better. And so, if they get caught up in melee, they're going to perform a lot better. They get Lightning Claws, they get Thunder Hammers, and they get the Frost Axe and the Frost Lightning Claws, I think. They're still called Lightning Claws, but I think they're, like, modified somehow. I'm pretty sure Wolf Claws are fairly different from normal Lightning Claws. I don't look after the Space Wolves very often because I'm not that into them. Anyways, you can also go up to your appearance. You can change the appearance of any character that you want. So, if you don't want him to be Megan Bjorn, you can, like, rename him. You can change his head around to make him look different. I tend to have my Space Marines. I prefer my Space Marines to have helmets on, and so that's what I'm going to do with a lot of these. I'm just going to marginalize them by putting them all in helmets. They don't look like they have eyepieces or anything, so unfortunately we don't really have the option. We've got Balder the Brave, we've got Luden, we've got Grendel, we've got Stigner. Obviously this is all based on Norse mythology. If you haven't figured that out yet, I'm not sure how to save you. It's There's a lot of Norse mythology in all this. We can also change their bodies, so if you want them to have different armor on, you can swap that around. There are different adornments and things you can wear to sort of, like, describe all of your characters. You can have a wolf head sagging over your wolf nuts if you want to, just in case you're taking a wolf step in the wrong wolf direction and something decides to wolf bite you. Just getting into the theme of Space Wolves here. 
But yeah, I'll probably go through later and customize the way all these guys look. Instead, I'm not really interested in doing it right now on camera. There are a lot of different ways you can make your characters look. I will customize them after this episode, and you will see. Now, we are playing a little bit differently with the Space Wolves because they don't have ranged characters, so that kind of sucks because the ranged combi bolters are really good. You can change equipment if you want, so you can get servo skull scanners. There's all kinds of stuff. You can pick it up along the way as you play the game. You'll find loot that you can equip. You have attributes, and so you can level these up to make your characters better. So technically, we could make... We could force them to have a ranged character if we wanted to by leveling this up a whole bunch. And in fact, I probably will, because Space Hulk is all about overwatching. There's also skills. These are like perks. You can swap them out. You start with a couple by default. They all do different things and they change the way that your guys play. But as you can see, this is not your grandpa's Space Hulk. This is a very, very different type of Space Hulk. Let's go ahead and start off the first mission because I feel bad right now. We haven't really like accomplished anything and we're already like halfway through the episode. So we get to play Purge, advance through the enemy and kill as many as you can. We get to just, oh, we only just, we deploy with one squad here. It's not really going to matter. They have a librarian. I wonder if a wolf librarian is any different. I sort of, I question that. Are wolf, li like, space wolves players, do your librarians do anything different? I'm only familiar with normal, like, space marine librarians, and so I don't know if they're, like, different in any way. Let's try it out. We'll go with the, let's go with the questionnaires for right now. All right, squad ask. If you don't know, you better ask. The fall of the Jotunheim. This might get ugly because I've never played this campaign before, so... Not really sure what the best plan is right here. I'll try and figure it out along the way. I'm I'm guessing my flamethrower squad is probably going to be my best plan. Entering through an old wound in the Jotunheim's flank, your squad advances into the dark and maze-like. The dark and maze of twisted metal. That's kind of a weird sentence. It would be into the dark maze of twisted metal. That and. that It's an extra conjunction. They've got an extra conjunction in there. A maze of twisted metal and broken debris that is the interior of the Space Hulk. You're following in the footsteps of Hyrolf and other heroes of legend, eager to forge your own saga in these ancient corridors. You are the vanguard, charged with preparing your way for the main assault by clearing the areas around the breach of whatever alien filth has made its home here. Bring them death. What if they're like, I don't know, maybe they're Tyranid human, a like human aid workers or something. Maybe they're not filth. Maybe they just want to be friends and hug us. So the first thing you'll notice is that this game is a little bit different. You deploy blind in this game, which actually makes the game a lot more difficult. Our first objective is just to escape, so I'm assuming... Okay, so our only goal is to go from one side to the other. That's all that we've got to do. We're starting out fairly simple, although I think it's probably going to be more difficult than that. I don't know what the hell that is in that room. There's all kinds of shiny Space Wolf stuff going on. I'm confused. I don't know anything about Space Wolves other than the fact that they were founded by Lehman Russ. He got into a fist fight with the Emperor. He had a drinking contest with the Emperor. He got in a fight with Lionel Johnson. Generally, nobody likes... From what I can tell, everybody hates Lehman Russ and then becomes his friend later on. I'm, I'm not really sure. That seems about right. But you deploy blind in this game, which is different than traditional Space Hulk. In traditional Space Hulk, you can see the entire map from beginning to end. In this case, we've got to learn to live with the fact that... Wow, they all have really, really bad AP. Yikes. 4 AP. That's pretty terrible. That's really bad. So yeah, they are not recommended for melee com I'm sorry, they're not recommended in ranged combat. Their AP is horrific. To give you a little bit of a, a difference, the Ultramarines have 6 by default on a lot of their characters. That's 2 extra AP. So, this might get a little bit hairier than I thought, not because there's beards and wolves involved. Let's, we'll start with Torad, I guess. We're going to follow the standard deployment rules in this game of scrub, scrub, librarian, scrub, uh, scrub, scrub. And we're just going to hope that it works out. I It's probably a bad idea to have my flamethrower so far in the back where he can't get into combat. I've actually found that in this game, you probably want to keep your flamethrower somewhere around the front. It tends to be a lot more clutch in this game than it was in the first ones. Once again, I'm sorry if the performance dips. There's nothing I can do about that. It's just sort of part of the game. Especially if you have a 10-man squad. Like, oh my god, have fun with those 20 frames per second. Let's go! Oh, never mind. We get a first turn. I should not end my turn right now. Since we're deploying blind, and we have no indication as to where the genies are at right now, we have no Robin Williams action taking place. No wishes have been made. I'm going to move quickly. I find that in this game, it's probably wisest to move quickly if there's no one else lined up on your radar right now. This is our scanner range right here. Be aware that we probably want to keep a good eye out for anything that's going to be trying to omnom down on us. I've never thought about Space Wolves going on board a derelict. That's actually kind of an interesting storyline to me. I might come around to this whole Space Wolf thing. I don't know. Let's wolf step in this direction. We'll spend some of our wolf AP. There we go. Everybody, wolf step forward. Awesome. And then we're going to end our wolf turn, obviously. 
We have no movement as of right now. Let's see what's what's different about him right now. His Psy skills. A Rune of Command. Targets gain 1 AP. Okay, and that costs him 2 Psy. How much Psy does he have? He has 10 Psy, and then he has a Prayer. It does area damage. Creates a Psychic Storm where the targets have a plus 20% bonus to survive. Survivors are frozen for one turn. So, that random rogue hiccup right there, that's a wolf hiccup. Anyways, so for him, I remember Psychic Storm. The extra AP will be nice though, so I'm guessing you kind of want to keep him near the largest conglomeration of your troops. Like, wherever they're all glomping around at, you sort of want him to be involved. I'm hoping, let's move to here. We still have no Gene Stealers on radar, which is weird. It's very, very odd. They tend to be a little bit more aggressive than this. And ah, there they are. There they are. And unfortunately, he didn't get them. So what we're going to look at first is we've got to look at the overheating system. The overheating system in this game is new, and it's designed to stop you from overwatching too much. Your gun, you know how bolter jams came up whenever you rolled like a one or whatever in the first game? Now bolters only jam when you run out of heat, and so it's much more like a video game now. It's predictable when your gun is going to jam, and in fact, I wish he hadn't fired at that one. Little bit of a bummer, but maybe he'll survive. Let's bring down the librarian just in case. I'm going to bring down this flamethrower troop. There's permadeath in this game, by the way, so if we lose a high-level character, that character is gone forever, and we have to replace him with somebody from our reserves. Sometimes it works out in your favor. I'm going to give you guys the big camera view because I know some people like it. Let me know if you like the big camera view or the little camera view. You can also make it, like, you can do, like, the weird predator vision, like the thermal vision if you want. You can do a bunch of, like, fun random stuff that really serves no function but is still enjoyable. I don't think the Gene Stealer can run that far on one turn. As far as I remember, they can move six squares. They might have gotten buffed though, so one, two, three, four, five, six. If he runs up on me, we can both agree that they've been buffed and that they can move farther than they used to be able to. Who's still got an AP left? Kettle. Kettle has an AP left. He's named after a pot, so you know. <laughs> I wish that we had a- I'm gonna name a character pot after this, and then they're both gonna call each other black, and it's gonna be hilarious. Well, is it that the pot calling the kettle black? It's gonna be hilarious. Oh, they actually went a direction that I didn't expect. Okay, so he's up a 27% chance to hit with Bolter Fire. Oh my god, these guys are terrible in Bolter. Oh god, they're bad. Okay, well then. That means that in melee, it's probably my best opportunity. Let's test it out. I don't know if this is a good idea. Everything inside of me is telling me not to fight in melee in this game. Like, everything I know from Space Hulk is telling me not to fight in melee. You have different attacks, and if you take a look right here, you can do Bolter Fire, you can do Burst Fire. Burst Fire gives you a minus 10% chance to hit, but you fire four times in a row. So, statistically, if you're below a 40% chance with two shots, you should definitely Burst Fire and take the four at 30% or something like that. I read that in a magazine somewhere that was for statisticians. Aimed Fire, they did an article on XCOM. Anyways, Aimed Fire, it allows you to aim a little bit better, but it costs 2 AP. And then finally you have Suppressive Fire, which is like an AoE that slows the Gene Stealers down and forces them to spend more AP to move, and then also gives them a chance of spontaneously, like, dying or something. I'm not, I'm not so sure how that all works. Like, it says minus 50% chance of killing. I... I think that that means that they don't, they have a lesser chance to kill you if they get you caught in melee. So it might be worth trying suppressing fire right now. I don't know. It doesn't look like it's going to work for us anyways. Let me take a look here. Suppressing fire. It says that it's got a 0% chance to hit. That seems pretty terrible. Maybe, since I've only got a 27% chance, what about aimed fire? Do I have any chance there? 50? We still managed to miss with a 50. Okay. You know. That's how it goes sometimes. 79. There we go. I like that better. All right. Vaporize ourselves a gene stealer. So we've reduced him to a bloody mucky pile on the floor. Over here on this side, I'll probably reload him and then set him to overwatch just in case. Because when he cuts through here, you'll at least get a couple free shots at him. I mean, these guys are really, really bad at shooting. So we're probably going to want to build these guys to hold down the fort when it comes to melee. Over here, it looks like we're being rushed by a couple of them. That's easy. We can get our -na 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 -na. We can get our rush on by just flamethrowing them out and it'll be fine. Unless they cut this way. If they cut this way, 
then we have a more sizable problem on our hands. Actually, I may... I kind of want to step up to here, but it's kind of a terrible idea at the same time. Uh, do you have anything left? Oh my god, we're in a bad position right now. We're in a very bad position. So, I sort of want to move him down to here so that he can overwatch this hallway. I don't know if this is going to work out very well. I don't think he can get at me on this turn. I don't think. It seems risky. How about this? It's 2 AP for me to get there, but I think Space Marines can move diagonal now. Yeah, Space Marines can move diagonal now. So what if I put you right there? That still only leaves you with 1 AP left. God, you guys' AP sucks so much ass. The AP on the Space Wolves is awful. Their AP is just horrifically bad compared to the Blood Angels and the Ultramarines. I guess I'll do that anyways. Let's live on the edge here for a moment. And then on this side, I'm going to step him forward by two. Oh, he got him! Alright, cool. So that solves that problem, I guess. Let's advance aggressively then. I'm going to keep the flamethrower unit right here for the next little bit, just in case. Just in case. And then on this side, they're going to have to get through a bulkhead first. So one, two, three, four, five. He might die. There's a distinct chance that he might die. Let's find out. Let's let's live a little bit, shall we, everybody? Let's live a little bit. He's blocked his friend in the hallway, so unfortunately there's no way for me to fix this right now. Is he going to attack? Or did he just run out of AP? Oh, they ran out of AP. Well, that's good for us. I feel like he's still... I think the Power Fist is the... Oh, wow, they have a great chance to kill in combat, though. Okay, so melee is the stuff with these guys. These dudes just, like, punch their way through problems. So I need to, like, rethink the way that I'm playing the game. Because I'm playing this, like, classic Space Hulk. And I need to, like, move my neurons around. Look at that face right there. That's a face that even a mother would be like, damn, you ugly. Like, I don't even think a mother would love that. Mother would be like, nah, I'm good. I can't get any love for that thing. That's why I spit it out. That's just, I let it go. Ah, I love that backhand animation. And so we've annihilated one of the Gene Stealers. I'm going to step to here. And I think we're going to go for melee again because we might as well. I mean, if we can fist punch our way through every problem, that's the only way to punch. I'll point that out at this point is that fist punching is the only way to punch. But, you know, just in case. Get on out of here. Give him a pimp slap from Jotunheim. There we go. And so we've handled that enemy. I don't think we need to watch this direction anymore, maybe he said. A little bit nervous about the fact that he's making that proclamation. On this side, I'm going to reload his Storm Bolter. And then we're just going to have him overwatch. I'm going to have this character step forward by one. Reload, and then overwatch. And then on this side, what I would really prefer is maybe for this guy to cross the T right here and fold in behind this guy. These guys will go this way. There's lots of little areas where the Space Marines can step out of the way so that somebody can bypass. This isn't a corridor that we're constricted to like our original order, so I think we're pretty good right now. I think that everything's looking pretty stellar at the moment. So while we're really bad at shooting, if we get into melee, it seems like we have a good chance of surviving, so I can take that. There we go. Reduce him to a nasty, bloody pile of nothingness. Onward, Space Marine. Fire your bolter. This is like a picnic to Space Marines. I don't know if you understand, like, how mundane this is to a Space Marine. They're like, meh. We're going on board the Space Hook. Did you bring the pink lemonade? Goril. Hey. Hey, Goril. Did you go to the store before we go on the Space Hulk? I want to make sure that on the Space Hulk that we have all the, all of the snacks that we enjoy. And then Goril's like, yes, I got those sugar cookies from the deli that have all the frosting on the top. They have that big, thick layer of frosting and also the sprinkles. And they'd be like, good, is the, are they wolf sprinkles? If they're not wolf sprinkles, I don't want to eat them because, you know, everything that we do is about wolves. So, I want wolf cookies with wolf sprinkles. He'd be like, yes, they have wolf cookies with wolf sprinkles. Did they have wolf lemonade? I think you might be pushing it a bit far. They did not have it. Wolf lemonade. God. I'm just going to, since this mission is about us making it to the other side, what I'm going to try and do is fold everybody back this way. So I'm going to try and get these three out of harm's way right now. I don't know if that's going to be attainable. I don't know how close. If he stops right here, so one, two, three, four, five, six. So yeah, he's actually in a really nasty position right now. I should have kept somebody going down this way to overwatch the entire hallway, and now I have screwed the pooch, and the pooch is not happy with me. If he stops right there, that's all bad for us. I think what I'd instead like to attempt is we'll move forward a bit. 
We've got the melee bonus. What's the worst that could happen? Somebody dies. I mean, we've only got to have three people survive here, so, you know, we'll give it a go. You do get a bonus to XP for everything that you kill at the end of the mission, so you do sort of want to spread out all the kills among your various different space marines just in case. I'm going to have him turn around now and have him start folding back into position. And, in fact, if I can get him down to here over the course of the next turn or two, I think a, a long distance overwatch down this hallway, we can wait until we have an opening, and then we can sprint the other four down the hall to right here, even though their AP is really, really bad. So I think the first thing that I might do with these guys is buff their AP. I know I was talking about buffing their ballistics first, but I may buff their AP first. I don't know. We may get trapped into kind of a nasty situation. I'm trying to allow our librarian to get a lot of kills too, in case you're wondering. Like, I want our librarian to level up the fastest, because librarians are super useful, because they're the only ones in the grim dark world of grim darkness who know how to read. Literacy, all time low. All time low in the Imperium. Sigils all over everything. Nobody can read them. Nobody can read them. See, that, that was what I was a tad concerned by. I could have moved them down to right here, but I'm still not sure that they can only move six. And so in the interest of that, What's going on here, and why can't I, like, solve this problem? What in the hell? Why can't I melee you? Oh, because I've got the wrong unit selected. Okay, that'll do it. I've mixed up the units. It's just another day at the Y. Let's go ahead and hit him with a power fist. Since we've got amazing chances, like, we're, we have a really, really good chance of killing things with a power fist. I'm honestly surprised. The other space marines have about, like, a 35 to 40 percent chance. On the plus side, when you melee, you don't automatically die now, which is pretty cool. I don't know if the enemy can spawn from over here. It does flag the spawns like it did in previous games. No! That was a misclick. I was trying to make him click to right here, and instead it made him move to here and turn to the right. Damn it. I wish that I had the undo key. Does this one have the undo key? I think they probably got rid of it. It was in the previous game. You had an undo key right here that you could use one, once per turn if you misclicked. And I loved that key. Yes. I rode that key like the most gorgeous horse ever. Unfortunately. Alright, so we'll have him step back by one while still overwatching. Although he does need to reload. So maybe I'll just have him come down this hallway. Just come along. Come along. Get with us. It's okay. We're sharing, we're breaking out the bag full of lemonade. Why did we bring it in a bag? Well, I didn't have any other, but it's, it's more of like a camel back, really. Just, it's pink lemonade. You want pink lemonade? Yes, I like the pink lemonade. The pink lemonade is so much better than the yellow. Well, technically, they're the same. I think we're good right here. I believe... I don't know if enemies can spawn over here. That's kind of unnerving. If enemies can spawn over here, that's bad, but I don't see a spawner. Typically, there's like a little red thing where the enemies spawn at, and there's a new rule in this game where if you stand within three squares of a spawner, nothing can spawn, and I like that rule. I like that rule a lot. I think that... I think we're just going to go for the victory right now. All I have to do is get three space wolves out of here, and we're good, so... I don't see any reason to dilly-dally, shilly-shally, and all that. Let's just... Let's just hustle, and we'll deal with problems as they come up. I'd like to complete this mission in the first episode. I would really, really like that. That would be... Awesome. Open that bulkhead. Is there anything in that? Do you see any gene stealers? Are they in there? I don't see any gene stealers. They seem to be napping. I don't know why, but whenever I do like a space marine voice, I feel like they should say the G at the end of words that end in I and G. Like napping. Sleeping. I don't know. I just feel like they should. No! Gene stealers! They've come for our pantalones. You have to make the joke. It's like wood for sheep. You just, you have to make the joke. So flamethrowers are new and improved in this. They've got three modes of fire. They've got focused fire, which does like this little triangle shape. They've got long fire, which basically fills up a hallway before it balloons out to fill like three spaces at the end. It does like a cross shape, basically. It does, I call it the Jesus flamethrower. It does a Jesus shape. And then we've also got wide fire. Wide fire is, I mean, the other fire modes pick on it because, you know, fat jokes and all that. But you know what? Wide fire to me has been the most useful the entire game. And so I like wide fire. I keep it where it is. Wide fire sounds like a really, really, it sounds like a discount like GoBot. Like his name is Wide Fire. He's, a, he's the GoBot. He's going to produce, he's going to compete with the mainstream Transformers. Yeah, right. <laughs> Nobody wants to play with wide fire. Nobody likes yes, wide fire. He's terrible. He's awful. We also broke that door so that now they have to spend AP breaking through it. Let's get off this thing. That would be the first thing that I would think about if I was on a Space Hulk. I'd be like, you know what I want to do right now? I want to leave. I don't want to be on this Space Hulk anymore. What are those? 
Those aren't on any of the other Space Hulks, those little frosty things. I don't know what those are. I'm going to have him turn and watch this way. If they spawn back over here, I guess we'll just have to come to terms with the fact that we're going to die. Our flamethrower should be able to hold this off, though. It's only going to take us a couple more turns to get out of here. Oh, he can actually leave right now? Yeah, get him off the boat then. Anybody who gets in here that can score right now, if you can score, go ahead and score. We only have to get three people off the, off the boat, so there's that, I mean. Now that they can't get by... Oh, what is that? Oh no, there's a spawn right there? Oh, that's terrible. That's the worst. I hate this. Oh, that makes me sad. How did I not see that? Okay, so... I'm gonna need a flamethrower. Do another wide fire right here. There you go. Oh, he changed his direction, actually. Awesome. And so we've killed that one off. Uh, librarian, I don't know if you're still here... But I would love for you to, like, use prayer. What did that do for us? Wait, what? What did that do? I don't know what that did. Recite forth to me what you have done, librarian. What have you done? I'm pretty- I thought that was a targetable skill, like you could drop it on people and be like BOOM! And drop it all upside their heads. Okay, I guess not. I guess that I'm going to do a panicked overwatch on this side. While this guy runs the hell away. It's not a very space wolfy thing to do, but you know what? Let's get out of here. He's got no AP left, so I'm not really sure what that did for me. I thought that maybe it's an AoE around himself, and that's why it didn't do anything. Either way, this is the make it or break it turn. Let's find out. Oh my god, he made the shot! I'm so excited right now. He made the shot! Oh, what's your name? What's your... Stigner. Stigner, you are the man, Stigner. I'm gonna get you just like a new helmet with like an awesome serpent snake thing on the side of it. You are the man, Stigner. You have very, very little AP though, which I find to be a little bit unnerving. On this side, we are going to continue with our wide fire. Be careful about using your flamethrower fuel on certain missions. You only get so much and you will fail the mission if you run out. If you haven't done the objective yet. If there's any mission that says shoot or burn, burn it just in case. Because I've found a couple missions so far that are bugged. Where even if you shoot the corpse of like whatever it is. Or you shoot the console you're supposed to be destroying. It still doesn't count. And so be careful about that. These guys run the hell back down the hall. Alright. Alright. Get everybody off the boat. He should be able to step backwards diagonally into this space, I think. Yeah, there it is. There it is. That's my dude. That's my guy. That's my friend. That's my pal. And the turn! The Gene Steelers are obviously going to rush us really, really hard right now. And what I'm going to do from stop to stop that from happening is I'm actually going to flamethrower the hallway. And so we are going to... Eh, that's not making me feel good right now. I don't like that one. I don't feel like that's actually because they can move diagonally. This might not work out so great. I may have miscalculated. Wide fire? Yeah, they can move diagonally, so this is not going to save us here. I should have left him up there. Either way, sorry, flamethrower dude. Bad day to be you. Everybody else off the boat. Off the boat. We don't want to miss macaroni paintings at 5 o'clock. If we miss macaroni paintings, it's totally going to suck. I hope that melee bonus works out for you, pal. Nope. So much for melee bonus. Damn, son. Ah, well. We lost the Terminator at the end, but I didn't... They've, they've nerfed flamethrowers. You can't fire them at point blank anymore. You have to fire them at least, like, one square out. And since they can move diagonally, I probably should have waited right here and done my thing. There's all the bonus XP. We only killed 12 guys, surprisingly enough. But that was the first mission of Space Hulk in the Space Wolves campaign. I look forward to seeing you all in the next episode. Take care out there, everybody. Kjartan hit level 2. I will see you all there. Oh, never mind. We got reinforced by a level 2. That's pretty sweet. Bye, everybody.